Hi there, this is John Garrett from Hypertransitory.com, uh, continuing on with my uh, making a logo in Illustrator. This is again kind of for beginners, so I'm kind of going to go through some uh, beginner concepts here uh, with making a logo. So uh, previously I was talking about the spot colors, and what you, what you will find is when um, uh, you want to make some vivid colors or put a lot of colors into your logo, probably best to try to restrain as much as possible because um, these these spot colors they are proprietary colors made by uh, different companies in this case Pantone and these these Pantone or PMS colors are uh, uh, pretty much probably the the most widely used colors you know in, in the North America in this uh, country uh, there's other ones in other countries but normally here in the States you're going to be dealing with Pantone colors and I, I, a lot of people I see a lot of logos and I think the instinct is to go hog wild with these and you you want a really colorful logo and you want uh, a lot of variety in the logo and I see people pick all these crazy colors and a lot of times that uh, is really not gonna work for you because these are very expensive these colors because each one of these colors is going to require its own plate on the printing press so that is going to add a lot of cost to your client and potentially to you if you have to cover the cost up front depending on your arrangement with the client so um, you can see here that if you see a design that has a bunch of Pantone colors in it uh, it, it could really uh, end up not being printable because most of these printing presses they might only have eight spots on the press and they just can't they literally can't print it you got an unprintable design so you're gonna have to convert some of the colors to CMYK in which case they'll probably go a lot flatter than than the Pantone colors because these are really made with specific formulas to really pop and you could end up uh, disappointing the client when they get a logo that uh, is using CMYK colors instead of these proprietary uh, colors so um, you know you want to avoid that and only and choose wisely with the colors essentially because you want to keep the number of colors down if possible um, so I'm gonna turn these back to black and I'm gonna get rid of all these colors that are in here now since I chose them and I'm gonna uh, select all unused and I'm gonna delete those so that's one thing um, you should watch out for another thing you can see that my logo here is uh, is horizontal and I prefer horizontal logos because they usually fit most of the spaces you'll find them in uh, much better than a vertical logo um, and I can show you I'm gonna move to my next tab up here and I did that by hitting control and the uh, command in the the tilde key probably in Windows it's control and the tilde key and that'll move you you know over to different uh, tabs and uh, command shift tilde is going to move me back but here we can see I've got a logo sheet this happens a lot where you you have a client and they say oh we need our logo we're going to be sponsoring something and uh, all these other businesses are going to be sponsoring so uh, we need our logo to fit in there now um, like if I go back here let's say that instead of a horizontal I've got a uh, vertical logo and I have one that I made here just for this this isn't one I would use but uh, I just made it just for this tutorial but so let's say I want to put this in here and oh wow I gotta shrink this thing now I gotta make it fit in there and yeah okay it barely fits but but now if we back out you know what does that say where I can read what coca-cola says and I can see Nestle and all this other stuff but what does this one say I don't even know what that is so you don't want that you don't want to you know embarrass your clients by having their logo be unreadable next to the other logos so uh, normally I mean I would put in uh, you know my logo here and it's readable uh, you, you don't have to squint you know hopefully you can make a logo that's gonna blow everybody else's logo out of the water when it's next to it but for now I mean just remember that probably a horizontal is how you want to do this um, and if you look on the letterhead that I showed before you've got this hyper transitory horizontal going here uh, you got to take care because this logo that you make is going to be showing up everywhere it's going to be showing up um, on their envelopes and it's going to be showing up on their stationery and um, you gotta think of these things so I mean if I had um, 
if I had my vertical here and you know what am I going to do with that I got to get it up there and hopefully it fits oh yeah it does fit but you know it doesn't look too good and um, you know I've seen people like to let me just undo that get back to where it was uh, you know I've seen things where someone take the opacity down and hey there's your logo in the center normally I don't think that looks too good I guess it kind of depends on the logo itself but I, I've never really seen it used to great effect so what I would do is uh, you know probably stick with a horizontal you know and again oh, even here if we look at this one let's say that I had my fleet of hyper transitory uh, you know widgets or whatever moving across the country and I'm gonna want my advertising on it. This is a big advertisement for me, and and I want people to be able to see it as it's driving by. So I mean, if you got a horizontal, you're looking pretty good there. You can pretty much fill up most spaces pretty good. But if I had a vertical, yeah, now I'm wasting all kinds of space. Maybe people who are far away they don't know what that says, and and you know, I don't know. It uh, usually you find those verticals waste a lot of space, and um, yeah, let's say you had a billboard. I mean, people can drive by and they can see what that says, but again, you got your got your uh, vertical here, and ruining everything. So as usual, so uh, those are things you should uh, be aware of, and there's also sometimes this is what I get I'll get these rasters someone will send me a logo and and it'll have raster files with it that uh, really kind of defeat the purpose of using a vector program because now if I need to enlarge this this raster file that's included here this isn't going to scale upward without losing quality it's going to lose a lot of quality when it scales up um, so you want to try to avoid including those in your logo and another thing, so this here is linked. When it is an X across this, it means it's linked. Now this one's embedded. And that means when someone saves the file, it's going to travel along with the file. So I'll, I'll make sure it's in there when I get the file. But this one is linked, and it's not going to travel along with the file unless you specifically remember to send it with the file. So, I mean, if you must include uh, these raster files, make sure to go up and embed that file. I can click there and now there's no X in it like this is linked this is embedded so it's always going to travel along um, and so uh, you won't at least be getting any missing file warnings and finally uh, another thing that I always see is I see all kind of sparklies and swirlies and things that people put in their logos and you probably want to try to keep it as simple as possible uh, things like this a lot of times they're not really necessary uh, I mean, I guess depending if your if your client makes firecrackers or something, then yeah, you, you're gonna have all kinds of sparklies and such things that you're gonna need. But let's just say that uh, um, you know I took this thing and let's put it in my logo sheet here. Let's turn that one off, and um, I'm gonna make a new layer here. Move that out of the way. So so now I got this thing here, and now it's even more out of whack. And I gotta go in here and shrink it and get all those swirlies in there and you got to be thinking about where is this thing going to go where is this logo going to be showing up at and and is there going to be a lot of extra stuff in the way and i mean i mean look at these logos they are pretty simple and pretty to the point um but you remember them so that's the kind of thing you want to be thinking of where is this logo going to go to and let's get rid of that yeah that's better yeah, we don't need that stinking vertical there. So uh, that's what I want you to think about for now. And I'm going to move on uh, next to talking about uh, using layers and using um, uh, outlining your type and using some of the effects, uh, warp effects and 3D effects that are found in Illustrator. So stay tuned for that.